Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, this week's Triangle Quantum Computing webinar. Um, I'm Eric Geisels. I'm your host uh, for this week. I'm kind of saying good afternoon, but I should say perhaps good morning, uh, because uh, our speaker uh, is in Singapore, and instead of uh, 2 p.m., it is 2 a.m., and I'm very grateful for Joao Dorigello to join us in the middle of the night. Um, he is going to present a really exciting project on optimal stopping problems, which are widely applied in many different areas. Uh, and in particular, uh, in the case of financial applications, we're talking about American type options contracts, which have early exercise features. And uh, those are really interesting uh, dynamic uh, optimization problems. Uh, so Joao, the floor is yours. Uh, welcome and thanks for accepting our invitation. I'm looking forward to your talk. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. It's, it's a pleasure to have you to have to, to, to be here. Wait, let me. Let me try to, oops. Yeah, try to make it full screen, perhaps. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I guess we could go scroll down. Wait, what is it? It looks like you're using a Mac, which I, so I cannot help you. <laughs> no, no, wait, I'm not using a Mac. Otherwise I could help you. There you go. Is there you go. All right, we're in business. Great. Cool, great. I'm it's all yours. <laughs> it's all yours. So just for uh, one last thing, perhaps to the audience, uh, if you have questions, feel feel free to um, uh, field them in in the chat, and uh, we'll um, we'll as we go, we'll address, uh, and also we will leave time at the end for questions. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me here. It's a pleasure to talk about my latest work uh, on quantum. And, uh, a quantum algorithm for stochastic optimum stopping problems, uh, some applications in finance. So first thing, let me shout out to my collaborators and co-authors, Alessandro Luongo, James Bao, Patrick Rebentros, who I couldn't find a picture of, and Miklos Santa. So I guess without further ado, I will, I will start, uh, start the talk. And if you have a, if any questions, I'm happy to be interrupted. Uh, so don't, don't be shy. So let's start, and as a tradition, let's consider the following simple game. Suppose you, someone chooses a uh, hundred different numbers, and they write these numbers on different pieces of paper. And uh, it can be any, any number, there's no restriction, the only restriction being that all the numbers must be different. And then these numbers are, are uh, shuffled and faced out, put down a table, and then is your task, I mean, you don't know, you have no idea what the numbers are, you've never seen the numbers before, and your, your task is to uh, flip the cards one by one and stop when you think you found the greatest number. So that's a classical example of a stopping, uh, optimal stopping problem. So the question is not, is, is not just finding the largest number, but stopping at the right time, right? At the point you think you found the right number. And surprisingly, you can, there's, a, you can, there's a methods or protocols that you can follow and you're gonna, you can find, you can like succeed in finding the largest number uh, and almost uh, a bit more than a third of the times you try this, uh, you try to play this game. So there's a very common example of a, problems options uh, stopping time. Another one is related to American options. Uh, I guess what most people are interested in here. So an American option is, maybe you know, uh, is a contract that allows the holder to buy or sell an asset at a very specific price called a strike price. And it can be exercised at any time until an expiration date. Uh, so given the Given you decide to uh, exercise the, the contract and given them strike price K, you can obtain this, this payoff given by the difference of the, the price of the asset and the strike, strike price. So if exercise, if the 
If the exit price is larger than stock strike price, you can exercise the option, have the right to buy this, the, the asset for strike price K and then resell it at a later uh, higher value S. So for example, I took this screenshot, uh, I guess one or two months ago, of uh, the, stock market, the stock price of apples. Um, so suppose back in around September, uh, you you had a call, you you create a contract, you bought a American option based on a, on a stock of Apple, with let's suppose a, um, a, a strike price of one hundred and sixty-five. So in the next following month, if you try to exercise, I mean there will be no reason to exercise the 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 the, the option. Well, you you wouldn't uh, win in, uh, gain any any money, but around after December, when the stock the strike price the the assets the, the asset price would be larger than stock strike price, you could have exercised the uh, the asset and could have like well, won around fifteen dollars uh, per per uh, uh, stock you had. So that's um, a very brief overview of famous. Uh, 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 optimum stopping problems and uh, I'll try to summarize and the takeaway masses like if what I want you to know at the end of this talk is that I'm gonna give a formal definition of what the stopping time problem I'm gonna present uh, the classical least square Monte Carlo algorithm based uh, uh, to, to, this, to solve these problems and to price American options I mean, then I'm gonna uh, they DAO lay out uh, the, um, our quantum version of the uh, least square Monte Carlo uh, algorithm. I'm going to present some error analysis and complex results. So let's let me now start to uh, give more details on the on the problem the problem statement. So for this, we need to get more mathematical. So suppose uh, this problem is defined based on a uh, on top of a probability space of sample space sigma. Uh, and a sigma algebra f and a probability measure p. So we're gonna be uh, using a Markovian or considering a Markovian uh, discrete time to classic process x uh, on a state space uh, uh, in, a, in R to the d. So this, this uh, stochastic process x is gonna be uh, modeling the behavior of our, our asset for example, uh, Apple stock price. And uh, we're gonna assume that at the beginning of the uh, 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 start, we know what the price of what the value of the, the stock process is, because I mean, uh, we, we know what the price of the stock is today. So we assume we know it uh, when it starts. Given this Markovian uh, process, it's, uh, it's going to imply an image probability by mapping uh, the the probability measure uh, on the on the original space sigma into the space uh, on the sigma algebra space on which the the, the Markovian process is based. So in actually the but it's just a it's just a notation that we might use, but it's not uh, really crucial here. What's more important that we're going to consider on top of this Markovian, the, the stochastic process X, we consider another stochastic process derived from it, from derived from X, by applying a inter, uh, square interval function Z T onto X. So you can you should think of it as the price of American option. So I'm saying here, the exit price can be modeled by the stochastic process X T. And the price of the American option price based on this asset is going to be modeled by Z. So if you think back uh, before, I mean, this function Z would be basically the max of the difference between the, the asset price and the, uh, the, the strike price. But it can be any, any square interval function. OK, so now we be we're going to be using a rule to decide when to stop our problem so in the case in the first case we consider we have to just have a rule to decide when we're going to stop uh, in order to find the largest number in the american option scenario we need a rule to decide when we're going to stop 
and sell or exercise the option. This, this stopping rule is called normally, is normally called stopping time, and it's basically is going to be a random variable. So the rule on which we're going to uh, base our, our we're going to stop is going to be a random variable. It's going to depend on has some randomness to it, right? So it's going to be a function between the sample space into a set of inches and uh, values. And the payoff will be obtained by, by the stopping time is basically, is basically going to be a random variable, which has now two entries of randomness from the value of the, of the, mark, of, uh, um, the mark of chain and the, the time at which you evaluate the mark of chain. So the problem we're looking at is the following. So for giving a parameter epsilon, what we want, we want to approximate the maximum expectation value of our reward, of our, our gain, of our profit, if you, if you will, uh, over all stopping time rules up to some additive accuracy uh, epsilon. So yeah, we want to maximize our profit. Of course, you want to stop at the, at the point when you think you're going to get the most profit out of your American option. So it is no, I'm not going to prove this, uh, these results, but it's a, this is a very standard in, uh, in, opt in, uh, in uh, optimum stopping, stopping time theory, and even if in fairness, the, the solution to this problem, so the maximization of the expected reward is given by considering the, the expected reward Evaluated on the following uh, on the following uh, stopping rule, this sig uh, this tau zero, and tau zero is the solution of this dynamic program here written here. So let me try to explain it. So the first thing is uh, I have to apologize because the, the dynamic program is written backwards, so it's going to start at, at time capital T and it's going backward in time, but it's just a, a technicality. So what it's saying is that you're gonna start at present, so you know what your value of the, your, your stock is, whatever all the market is. So you really, you're gonna pick uh, tau capital T equals T. And then in the future, what you're gonna do, you're gonna ask yourself, is my expected, or oh, the current uh, 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 price that I have here, the American price I have here in current time, is it greater or equal or less than the future spectral reward? So let me try to break it down here. So this uh, one uh, and um, curly brackets is the indicator function. It means the equals one if the statement inside is true and is zero if it's false. So what statement is here is saying is that if ZT, which is my, my uh, profit on my price at a value t. If it's greater than this expectation, this expectation what is what it's saying is that my future reward, so my z in the future, my following this rule, I, I'm, I'm using this so tau t plus one. If my future reward, given what I know, so given x t, even given what I know now. If, it, if, if, if it's less than what I have here, I should stop. So I should pick uh, tau t equals t. Otherwise, if it's less, so if z tau is, is sorry, z t is less than my, what I expect to earn in the future, I should continue. So I should pick t tau as t, uh, tau t plus one, so in the future. So I hope it, I made it clear. So you wanna, at any point in time, evaluate, would I expect to receive more in the future? If yes, I'll continue. If not, I'll stop at that point. These uh, expectations are, con are called continuous values, which uh, I'll be using this name throughout the talk. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat here the, the, this dynamic program that we need to solve, but the problem is that we don't know how to solve, it, how to solve it exactly. Because of these, a few different numerical algorithms were proposed throughout the years. And a very famous one is the least square Monte Carlo algorithm by Longstaff and Schwartz back in 2001. And this algorithm became ubiquitous, ubiquitous uh, 
in uh, evaluating uh, American options, pricing American options. And apparently, as, as far as I've seen, is, is used throughout the, the industry. So this, this algorithm, that's the LSM, or least square Monte Carlo algorithm, is used as uh, main, two, two main approximations. What it does is gonna approximate or expand this continuation of values by a set of pre-selected functions. And these functions is whatever you want to be, like is, is the user or the people, the person who is uh, trying to approximate or run the algorithm to choose this, this set of functions. Well, whatever function you pick, you like to pick. And a second approximation is that you're gonna evaluate these functions, the functions that you selected by using a Monte Carlo procedure. So let me get into more details what I just said. So let me go through the classical LSM algorithm. So I just said the first approximation is by pick a set of square interval functions called hypothesis class. And this can be, as I just told you, any nicely behaved uh, functions, for example, uh, a finite set of trigonometric functions or interesting polynomials like Hamid, Laguerre, Chebyshev polynomials. And then you're going to approximate the conscientious values by a function in this hypothesis class. But of course, like which function should you pick? And the question is you're going to use the unit square uh, regression in order to pick this function. In more details, if you consider a set EK of M real functions, what you're gonna approximate, you're gonna approximate this contention of values by a linear combination of these functions. So I'm just uh, writing here. And this coefficient alpha, this vector of coefficient alpha is gonna be picked as the one that minimizes the square uh, difference between uh, your approximation and the, the value of the your American option or just your Markovian stochastic process. If you pick linear independent functions, then you can solve, uh, you can solve, you can this uh, this arc mean uh, exactly. And alpha has a the following closed formula. It's basically a solution of a linear system. Uh, where alpha, uh, well, sorry, where a is given is a matrix given by this coefficient, so it's a mat it's basically uh, a uh, a matrix of, of correlations between the, the your 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 peaked uh, uh, polynomials or functions, and b is the is this vector here related to uh, uh, the your, the price of your or the value of your Markov chain. Okay, but the problem that we gave, we have this uh, nice approximation, but you can see the B and A, they still depend on the on ex, on ex, exact uh, uh, expectation. And this can be quite hard to, to calculate. So what does the second approximation uh, do? It's going to evaluate this, uh, this function we just chose by using Monte Carlo sampling. So more specifically, we're gonna sample n independent paths. So we're gonna any independent uh, trajectories of our Markov uh, chain from one to capital N, and we're gonna denote by uh, z and the subscript n the associated payoff of each uh, of each uh, Markov chain. And for each path, we're gonna solve the dynamic program we had before. And at the end of the day, we're gonna get n different sampling stopping times. So going back to our uh, approximation of approximating approximation of this continuation values. So now we're gonna approximate, if you remember, we have this expectation value here. What the uh, usual Monte Carlo pro, uh, procedure does is gonna uh, approximate this by uh, expected, uh, by sample expectation, right? So you're gonna sample n times, you're gonna take the, the average of these samples, and it's gonna approximate the, our, our exact uh, 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 expectation. So in any case, we had, a, again, if you have linear independent functions, 
then our 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 ex expect uh, our exact expectations they become a sample expectations. So our vector B becomes this this sum, and so so is uh, so does uh, the uh, the matrix A. Okay, and at the end of the, the dynamic program, you're gonna, as I just told you, you're gonna obtain n different capital n different stopping times, and then if you remember what we had to do, we want to solve this uh, supremum, so the maximum expectation reward. Uh, we can prove this equals this maximum between what we currently have nowadays, so z uh, z zero, and your future spectral reward. So we're going to approximate this expectation by uh, the uh, sample expectation by using Markov. Uh, so I'm on Carlo sampling. Okay. So in, in a more uh, schematic uh, way, the linear square Monte Carlo algorithm is the following. We use sample and dependent path of the Markov chain, and you compute associated payoffs and values uh, from the functions you picked. And then you're gonna estimate the matrices uh, A and compute the inverses, uh, their inverses. And then you're gonna start solving uh, the dynamic program for each, for each path. So what you start is you start like in, in the present. So you set all your tau t's to be t. And then you do the following. So each time step, you're gonna calculate the, the vector alpha. So if you if you remember, like the half of uh, sorry a the matrix a times the vector b, which is written here, which is a sum. There's a expected uh, sample, expected sample, uh, and then you're gonna solve the 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 the, the decision if you're gonna stop or not. So you do this for uh, for each path, and and do this for all the time steps until you arrive at tau t. And at the end you have you have n, n different times tau tau t and you're gonna put the maximum between what you have and the expected uh, uh, payoff following this rule tau t. Okay, so that's it. So that's that's basically what been proposed 20 years ago by Longstaff and Schwartz. But the error has the complexity of these of this algorithm like is being is, has been developed for the past twenty years and still uh, some open questions to it. So um, I'm gonna just give the highlights of what's uh, been done. So long stash wise, they offered some like theoretical arguments for convergence, and they performed some numerical experiments to corroborate the the analysis. But since their work, many many other works followed. They improved and generalized. Uh, the their RNL analysis. So for example, Clement, Englops, and Zenga, just to name a few. And very recently, uh, Zenga 2020, uh, he proved that the expected uh, your output is an expectation is very close to, to, to the real value by sum upper bound given by basically square root of log n divided by n. So a typical micro, uh, typical Monte Carlo uh, uh, result when you have basically one over square root of n number of samples, and you have this exponential time dependence, which unfortunately uh, uh, no one seems to have to have improved yet, but uh, I believe I believe it, it could be. Uh, just a, uh, a a quick mentioning: uh, most of these results. They are concerned on the number of samples and not really on time, so they don't really care on how much how much on how much time does it take to invert matrices or doing matrix matrix comp computations. But uh, in our paper, we consider this this this, this point because there's there's no such uh, analog quantum analog of sampling. Uh, sure. Well, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Sure. Uh, there must be some assumption on the base functions that you expand, right, along the way that you do these approximations. So, uh, the, the, you don't. So, the, the, for example, the, the results of of Zenga are very, very general, and uh, they they assume like uh, a finite uh, VC dimension, for example, and Correct. some. Uh, 
some some uh, square interval uh, 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 functionality. In our case, we're gonna assume they they should be linear independent, so we can use this closed form. But you don't actually have to. I mean, this. I maybe say something that I perhaps was gonna say at the end, but kind of since we're on the, to the topic, mm -hmm. use you limit your. Uh, functional approximations to just be functions of x. And mm -hmm. if you go to the math finance literature, uh, and I actually wrote papers on that, um, mm -hmm. you, you actually get invariant functions, not in x, but in a two-dimensional space, which is um, x divided by k, where k is the strike price. That's, that's trivial. Uh, and time mm -hmm. to maturity, and you, you that gets you that gets rid of indexing this by time these functions. Mm -hmm. Now you have an, an invariant set of functions, and that's an easier that's a better state space to to work with than just x. So you mean like you could get can you use the same hypothesis class? Yeah, uh, so you can prove they, they, from a mathematical uh, point of view that in a Black-Scholes type economy, and you can mm -hmm. extend this to stochastic volatility, that's another paper that I wrote. Um, but in the case of a Black-Scholes economy, you can show under suitable regularity conditions that your American options uh, exercise boundary or optimal policy is a, is a time invariant function of two arguments, mm -hmm. stock price divided by, by, by um, strike and um, time to maturity. And it's an invariant function that it's unknown, but invariant, time okay. invariant. I, I, we can, I can send you references. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's interesting because I mean, I, I'm gonna mention at the end, we're gonna consider some, some uh, probability measures, I guess in the, in the, when we consider geometric brown emotion, in that case, we had to take different uh, different set of functions at each time step. Yeah, so that's right. That's right. That's mm -hmm. that is your problem because you have a dependence on time to maturity. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt you too much, but this is something I wanted to talk about. <laughs> right, yeah. Cool. No, thanks for the information. Uh, I'm curious to to read this paper. Okay, so let me move on to the quantum. Uh, our quantum uh, least square Monte Carlo algorithm, if there's no more questions. So the main idea, as you can expect, is that we're gonna use the quantum Monte Carlo uh, version or algorithm to approximate uh, the vectors B and matrix A. Uh, so what, what is this uh, uh, algorithm? So it was proposed by uh, Ashley Montanara, my, my previous, a previous supervisor, uh, in 2015. And it basically said that given a, a, a parameter epsilon and a random variable x with mean uh, uh, mu and variance upper bound by some value sigma square, there is an, a quantum algorithm that runs in time uh, basically one over epsilon that outputs a good approximation to, to the mean of epsilon. Uh, within uh, additive accuracy, epsilon, with higher probability. So classically, what you have is you're gonna, you're gonna need epsilon squared time, one over epsilon squared. But quantum, you only need one over epsilon. So you got a square root improvement on the runtime. So that's gonna be our basis for, for our, our main subroutine through our, our algorithm. Um, okay. There's been a few recent results uh, that generalize Ashley's uh, result. Um, for example, the paper of Cornelison, Hamoudi, and Yerby from last year, in which they have the same idea, but now the random variables are multivariable, so it's a vector you want to approximate uh, within an LP norm, uh, the expected value of this uh, vector, this random vector. But we don't. We, we, as far as we, we could see, the, you don't get much improvement by using this result, only poly logarithm improve, uh, improving savings. So we decided to stick with Ashley's uh, 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 algorithm, which is simpler. 
The problem is that we, the problem is we don't know how to, it's hard to access our, our, our stopping times, our tau t's. I mean, classically you have them on computer. Like you have, you have n numbers, n, uh, capital N, one for each uh, samples uh, uh, path. But here we need them, all of them in superposition. And this is, gonna, this, this is the main problem we have to face. So before, we before I talk about the algorithm, I need to introduce obviously the, the, our sampling axis, uh, or the, the, the input model we consider. So as is typical in this, uh, in this, in this uh, approach, in Monte Carlo approaches, we're gonna have, we're gonna assume that we, we have uh, access to this unitary UP. Let's give us a superposition uh, over all paths of, uh, of, of a Monte Carlo, a discretized version of a Monte Carlo, if it's continuous in the first place. And it's gonna be weighted by uh, the probability of, of such path. So PX is, a, is the probability of the, the, your Markov chain has assumed the values uh, X, one and two to xt throughout the path. So we're gonna assume you have access to this unitary. And we also have a, a we are also gonna assume access to quantum access to functions. So we're gonna have a unitary vh that's gonna uh, compute the function of, uh, of x uh, in superposition. Okay. So I'm gonna give a high level analysis of our algorithm. So as I previously mentioned, uh, you're gonna use Monte Quantum Monte Carlo on, on vector B and matrix A, T. And you're gonna compute, and this is important, you're gonna compute alpha classically, not quantumly. And we're gonna take advantage that this matrix uh, A and vector, A, they are small, uh, their size is M. M being the number of, of, of functions you're gonna pick to expand your, your concentration values. We're gonna assume M is relatively small or it's smaller than other quantities. And we're gonna be using, we're gonna be computing this, uh, this uh, alpha, our vector alpha classically, and we're gonna use it, we're gonna store it and use it to compute the next stopping time tau t. But as I made previously mentioned, the problem is we, we need to compute this tau t in superposition, and we don't have we don't have access to the previous one. I mean, if you remember, in order to compute tau t, we need uh, we need knowledge of the previous tau t's that we computed. We don't have this as we do we did in classically. We don't store them in, in a hard way. They, they are they are used in superposition. If you wanna have access to the quantum Monte Carlo uh, subroutine. So the way we could we thought and we could get around this is that we have we're gonna have to recompute all stopping times uh, at a certain uh, time backwards in order to, to pr proceed at a at some point in time. So we can have a some uh, overhead a time overhead compared to to class classical the classical version. Okay, so. More specifically, how I'm gonna how are you gonna compute the tau t is the following. So we want a, a unitary, uh, I'm calling it CTK. That's gonna do the following. It's gonna map or it's gonna compute basically the entries of the vector B for a certain uh, value X. So it's gonna compute uh, the value of X, uh, I'm sorry, Z, the, the uh, American option price. Uh, at evaluated at, at, uh, at, a, at a sample uh, X and uh, uh, of stopping time tau t times the, the value of the function we, we chose. So how are we gonna, how we construct so unitary? So we do the following. So we're gonna construct and we're gonna need the knowledge of alpha. So we assume we have, we gonna have alpha in our possession. And we're gonna use this alpha to construct this falling map. So at time capital T, so at the beginning, we just use this, this simple mapping. We're gonna basically uh, compute T for all of our axis, so it's, it's fairly trivial. But for, for the next times, for uh, uh, 
in the future, what you do, you have to, you're gonna use the value of alpha and give in a time tau that you currently have. So here, tau t plus one. You're gonna use this to solve uh, the definition of the next step. How you're gonna, you're gonna use it to solve the next time step of the your stopping time stopping rule, as I put in the footnote here. So we're giving alpha as I put here. You can you have classically you can and, and tau t plus one. Well, you can solve for tau t. And given this, you're gonna have to construct. Uh, we have to construct this entire VT that is gonna define map mapping. So given that we know what uh, what tau t is, what the stopping rule is at a, a certain time t, we can obtain the the entry or the corresponding entry of the vector b. So what our unitary will look like at the end is gonna be the following. So what we do, we're gonna as compute all the tiles, so starting from tau capital T until the tau we need, so uh, tau T. So as I'm saying, we have to we compute everything. And once we have tau T, we can apply this mapping V here and obtain the, the corresponding answer that we want. And then I uncompute everything I did before. So I end up with this. This is the, the, the unit that we're gonna input in actually subroutine to compute to approximate the, the vector B. Okay, now I'm gonna give a more schematic, uh, systematic uh, 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 algorithm of our algorithm. So what you do, you're gonna start by approximating the matrices AT by quantum Monte Carlo by using Ashley's subroutine. You do this for each entry. And then you're gonna compute the inverses classically. And you're gonna keep these matrices as, uh, as a cl classical. And then you're gonna keep start constructing your unitary, uh, your unitary uh, W team. And then you're gonna start solving the, the linear system, the dynamic program, sorry. So uh, at first, the first time step, you don't need to construct the, the W T. You construct, you already had for capital T. And what you do, let, let me go through the only the, the first the first time the first uh, iteration of the loop. So suppose you have you in capital T. So you already have WT, you construct the full unitary. You know what uh, you know what the T T tau uh, so tau T is. In our case, it's just capital T. And then you can approximate the your your vector B T. Here, B T minus one, by in, by using this unitary or this uh, this uh, layer of unitaries, a sequence of unitaries, into Ashley's uh, uh, algorithm. So you're gonna remember that we're gonna we need we want to approximate this vector. So this enter here is basically what we're getting here from this from the vector from the from the uh, unitary V T or or the the whole, this whole unitary, and Given that you have BT now, you're gonna compute the alpha uh, classically. And this alpha is gonna be used in the next iteration of the loop. So if you go for the next iteration of the loop, you're gonna be using it to construct the next uh, uh, WT. And this WT, of course, is gonna be used later to compute the next uh, B, and you keep going through this, through this loop until the very end in which you're gonna have alpha, basically alpha one, and you're gonna use alpha one to construct W1. So similar as before. The only difference now is that our unitary V is gonna be slightly different. So instead of multiplying by our, our expansion, expansion function, uh, EK, which is gonna map it to the, the American option price or the Markov chain price at a, a time uh, tau one. And then later we can approximate our expectation value of the respect of, of our reward following the expected rule. So tau one using quantum Monte Carlo. So, so similar we had before by using this unitary. So again, we com we compute all the 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 tiles we we from from start to end until t one. And then we can compute the expected reward. And then we output 
well, <laughs> we would put uh, the maximum between what we currently have and the approximation of such uh, expectation we got. Okay, that's so that's basically the algorithm. Hopefully, uh, the high level analysis is, is clear. Maybe the details on how the uh, how how the, the everything fits together might be a bit uh, more complicated. But okay, so we had the following results from uh, comparing classical the class and quantum version of our algorithm. So given a parameter epsilon and a, and a lower bound for the minimum minimum singular value of the matrix A. And uh, what happens is the following. The minimum list square Monte Carlo is going to approximate, is going to output some approximation to what you want. So the expected uh, reward, the supreme expected reward, uh, up to this error. So it was a, and uh, classical, classical algorithm is going to use this runtime, and quantum is going to use this runtime. So now, now let me try to break. Uh, this the result in for you. So let me start with the error. So our error has two terms. So let's forget about the, the time dependence for now. So the first term comes from Monte Carlo approximation. So it is an error you can make smaller by sam sampling more paths classically or interacting, have more iterations uh, in the quantum Monte Carlo algorithm. But the second term is a term that is known as approximation error, and it is a deterministic term. It doesn't depend on the on the Monte Carlo approach. Uh, it says it, it really depends on the the chosen functions that you you the the, the functions you chose at the first. So of course you need to you're gonna you approximate at at, at beginning your your function value by a set of functions, and this error approximation error tells you how good the approximation. Uh, uh, it, how good it is. If, if you want to make it better, you need to uh, pick more terms. So you need to increase m, the number of, of functions. So there's the approximation get better. I mean, when you get m to infinity, so you, you get, uh, uh, you can approximate perfectly, this error goes to zero. But of course, you don't want to pick m to go to zero, so it goes to infinity. And regarding the, the complexities, so you can see that as usual, or as expected, we have a, uh, a square root improvement in epsilon. So epsilon here, classically is, is epsilon square, it, is, it decreases to or just epsilon. And so does the minimum singular value from the fourth, the fourth power to the second power. Our dependence on the number of, of linear functions m is, is, is improved, but not quite uh, quadratically. Uh, and the only downside of our, our uh, algorithm is the time dependence that now is increased. Uh, is, is t squared in, in time of t, uh, and it really it really comes from like redoing, recomputing all the uh, stopping times at, at time uh, from capital T to time t every time we need it. Uh, we hope that it can it can be improved. Uh, we consider some so. Um, slowly running out of time, but um, I just want to mention that we consider, um, so we have this open question, like we don't know what this appro approximation error is, and we also don't know what the minimum singular value is uh, in general. So in order to figure this out, we consider very specific cases uh, for our algorithm. So we consider the case when we're taking a polynomials of degree at most q as an approximation for our continuation values. And we assume uh, the continuation values should be n time differentiable functions. And we picked uh, the underlying Markov process to be geometric, a, ge a Brownian geometric motion and a Brownian motion. And uh, you can, you can uh, figure out uh, what these parameters are, what the minimum singular value, and how many functions do you need, what m, how large m should be to get a final dependence, a final error of epsilon. But I don't, I don't, I won't get into detail uh, about about this. I think is is too, uh, too too maybe too complicated. It might be not be of, uh, of 
of each two. I mean, but instead, I'm going to just briefly mention, uh, discuss like it. So, is our algorithm suitable for NISC uh, uh, quantum computers? NISC is uh, standing for noisy intermediary uh, uh, scalable quantum computers. Or, and probably the question is not, I don't think we're going to, uh, this, uh, this algorithm is going to be useful in near term devices like IBM, Google, or D Wave uh, that are coming out. Uh, 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 there's not coming around, but it's already here. Uh, I think any square root uh, improvement won't get to see the, won't cut it for this device, to be honest. But I think we're gonna need a full, a full uh, fault tolerance quantum computers to serve any advantages uh, for quantum, for quantum uh, our, our our algorithm included. So, so summarize, we proposed a quantum version of the least square Monte Carlo algorithm, and we obtain, obtain, obtain a new quadratic improvement on the complex for a few scenarios. So a few open problems, like of course, can I improve the time, uh, the time T uh, dependence? Uh, I believe so. Uh, this might require a full quantum algorithm without classical intermediary classical steps as computing the, the vector alpha. And of course, all the algorithms for optimal stopping time, we just talk about a specific one with Square Monte Carlo, but there are many others out there. Maybe this can be quantized and improved. And with that, I'll, I'll finish and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Joao. We have a question. Um, I, I, you have access to the chat, I think, right? Davis uh, Clark has a question about uh, the implementation of NISC um, um, devices. Um, it's, is it because of physical versus logical qubits, uh, the usability of LSM on, on these NISC devices? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna need a lot of, of qubits, uh, both physical and logical qubits uh, to run this device. I mean, not only not really to run. I mean, you could run this, but you won't get any speed up, right? You need you need in order to get the to start appreciating the advantage coming from a square root improvement. You you're gonna need to run it on a, a on large instances of the problem, and uh, use a lot of qubits. And we don't currently have. I don't think a, a hundred qubits. That's what we currently have is gonna gonna make it. Uh, so it's yeah, no, and to use a lot of qubits, we're gonna need fault tolerance. So I have a quick suggestion. I mean, you get killed on t squared, right? I mean, that's <laughs> sort of potentially. Uh, oh, it, the, it, yeah. Let me just f first say that uh, you get killed on t squared, I presume. Um, so, so it's it's not too bad because. I mean, more or less. The, the problem is that if you consider, if you take into consideration that this exponential time yeah. dependence, it's we, it's this, not this much is you bad. Can do about that one. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. This this well, is no, this is not, this is an issue even for for the classical algorithm. But if you if you consider the, I mean, so at the end of the day, both uh, both algorithms have this exponential time dependence. So t squared at the end of the day is just a polylogarithm factors, right? So maybe it's not too bad compared to you have uh, this huge time dependence already. But I agree that it would be great to improve that. Well, my suggestion was going to be you have a choice on T. Um, namely, it, that's the time to maturity, how long the contract. Mm -hmm. But the intervals that at which you compute uh, the um, Ex potential exercise of the op of the American option, uh, they can be the spacing of those. Yeah, it can be. It can, it can, they it can. they can be chosen. I mean, yeah. practically, you can go from daily to weekly, whatever. And so you could potentially, um, if you care only about the pricing of the contract, um, uh, be less accurate on the grid, the time grid that you compute the, the exercise premium, mm -hmm. um, but still the price of the American option with the early exercise premium 
is well priced, despite the fact that you're taking a less a less uh, dense grid. Um, anyway, so there is some leeway you can actually think about playing taking playing off um, uh, um, the time uh, scale um, in, in since you get penalized by that. Uh, there are some other questions. Um, there's one by um, Nick Stamatopoulos. Um, uh, in the quantum uh, least square uh, SLM algorithm, you need to mm -hmm. estimate an amplitude so uh, wait, the, a number of times. Um, wait, so, uh, first, Davis, uh, he asked like how many. I didn't oh, see I, I skipped many. another one, but the, yeah, yes, many? that's right. I apologize to uh, I think, uh, Davis. I apologize. I think maybe physical qubits, maybe a few hundred thousands, maybe millions. Yeah, a lot, a lot. A lot. I mean, I, I don't think it's not, I've been talking to other people in the field and uh, it's not controversial to be expect this kind of, this this magnet, this order magnitude for the square root uh, improve, uh, advantage. If you have exponential advantage, sure, you can you can get away, you could you you see this much earlier, but square root is a bit, it's a bit, here, it's a, a bit hard to see in the, in the near future. Oh, maybe only if you have like very, very, very good qubits, very clean qubits. So, so Nick has a question about mm -hmm. um, amplitude estimation. You, you can read it, right? Everybody can read it. Yeah, so. In the quantum algorithm, we need to estimate an amplitude a number of times. Purify how many times, how many rounds of the samples round you need to do. Isn't so? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't say this. I didn't uh, uh, make explicit. But it's basically gonna be. Uh, let's, let me go back. So uh, where do I wanna go? Okay, so like when when I call this the Monte Monte Carlo, for example, the ve the, the vector here, I want I want at the end of the day this vector uh, uh, the. Uh, because I, I need to, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna need to propagate the error from from B and alpha to alpha. So B B and A to alpha. So I need each entry of this to be like basically epsilon uh, uh, over uh, square root of m. So there's some m dependence here. So that's basically the the number of calls I have to do it uh, quantum like basically square root, square root of, of m over epsilon. For the matrix, a bit is a bit is a bit worse because you have to. There's more entries, so we have to approximate them better. So it's gonna be basic m over uh, uh, over epsilon calls. That's 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 where the you're getting the the complexity at the end of the day. So you have each entry is basically you have. M and then you have some uh, 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 actually it's like M square actually X M square and have M square entries so that's how, that's where you get M M to the fourth here. So Nick also has a question about when you need to do inverse uh, classically or. Uh, so that's a great you... that's a that's a great question. So we. That, that's that's an open question we put in the paper. Like maybe maybe this this these uh, inversions can could be done right. uh, uh, quantumly with HHM, but we thought about this and we couldn't we couldn't make it work. So maybe you could. The the yeah, the problem is to compute. I it, it's hard to think how we're gonna. Uh, uh, how are you gonna store? How, where are you gonna have these alphas, and how are you gonna how how can you use these alphas to decide to to decide on the, the, the to the next the next time step on like so tau tau t. Classically, this is this is easier, but if you have your your alphas in superposition, I don't know how that that'll be easy. So, so I don't want to come back to too much to my question at the beginning sort of halfway through your seminar that uh -huh. if you get time invariant functions this this expanded state space that is to say uh prize divided by strike and time to maturity as arguments and and you can 
define your base functions the way you want, whether it's Laguerre, Chebyshev, uh, Legendre, you name it. Um, mm -hmm. y your M is going to be smaller. You're going to have to have, you're going to have a, a better approximation in this expanded space. Um, and your M is smaller. M is the dimension of the base functions that you, you take, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so I think that's, to, and also I think your alphas now don't become time dependent, I think, because mm -hmm. you, you embed that time variation into that functional approximation by the expanded states space. I think that might actually help you quite mm -hmm. considerably. Uh, that's my conjecture. <laughs> I think it. I think it does, but not not on this not on this uh, runtime. I think this 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 won't won't improve. What could improve is is that a specific case when you consider Brown and Jonas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am yeah. talking about. All right. Yeah. Maybe I, this I am, could improve. No, no. I'm not talking about the general case. You are absolutely right. If you just take a Markov chain, that's it. What I'm doing is I'm relying on math finance arguments that for specific data generating processes specific such, such as geometric brownian motion the black Scholes model mm -hmm. for those we know more about what that function should look like that that's my argument mm, yeah i think so uh, for the brownian motion we we well we took heme polynomials of course because then matrix the matrix a is just identity and you don't have yes. to care about them anymore yes Yes. The geometric brown emotion we we our, our we 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 pick uh, monomials and these monomials dependent on the on time. So, and I in the in the geometric brown emotion is very is even is even more uh, uh, is even harder is even worse because they're very sensitive to the to the minimum minimum singular value of the matrix mm -hmm. a. Sorry, so they're very sensitive on the on the the polynomial, on the, the the number of of, of m, or the or the degree of the polynomial. Uh, so in, maybe, in the interest maybe. of time, I think we're running a little bit out of time, and you must be very tired. It's the middle of the night for, for you. <laughs> uh, I, I maybe I'll, I should finish on a on a funny note. Um, sure. That is the founder of mathematical fin finance is Louis Bachelier. And he wrote his thesis at the end of the 19th century, advocating Brownian motions for the, for, as, a, as a model for stock prices. And his uh, thesis advisor, Henri Poincaré, thought that was a really, really dumb idea. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the, the Brownian motion is uh, not really a good model, but geometric Brownian motion is, is much better. Is better yeah. um, on that note, um, on, a lighter, on that lighter note, I'd like to just announce, first of all, Thanks, Joao. Uh, this uh, was a great talk and a great paper. Congratulations on that. Thank you very um, much. And next week, uh, I will host uh, another uh, finance-related quantum webinar series, uh, webinar, so rather, uh, on NISC HHL, which came up in today's talk, actually. And it will be presented by Dylan Herman from uh, JP Morgan. See you next week. Thank you, everybody, for participating and have a good weekend.